News First News Line. Hello there, very good evening to you. I am Satur Angkaparaja. I'll be filling in for Shal and today to keep you updated for the next half an hour about several key issues, uh, especially targeting the Colombo Municipal Council and the areas that come under the purview of the Colombo Municipal Council. We are going to talk to the Chief Medical Officer of the CMC, Dr. Ruan Vijayamuni, and also we are going to talk to Indibari Mihindukula Surya, entomologist attached to the Colombo Municipal Council, so therefore in charge of the Colombo City. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, for, we are going to uh, focus on three main areas, that's COVID, the vaccination process in Colombo right. as well as the dengue situation here. Right. Uh, let's start uh, Dr. Vijay Muni from the uh, COVID-19 situation. We have been uh, in a travel, we have been experiencing travel restrictions for the past almost, uh, we are month. seeing this for a month and uh, at the end of the month we don't see a reduction in the number of patients that's why, especially looking at the Colombo city limits. There are still numbers coming in uh, whether the PCR tests are done by y'all or they are done by the private sector there are a large number of patients coming in uh, being reported let's start there why are there so many uh, patients does that mean that the travel restriction didn't work well i think it's a, it's a very valid point uh, when we look at the the, the scenario when when this uh, uh, the third wave or the rather the new year cluster started soon after the new year we saw about you know um, very few cases from Colombo city limits, and uh, it started gradually going up. Mm. And and what we saw was uh, the vast majority of those positives were mainly from the outside, from who came from outside the city limits. So mm -hmm. they have come from the outskirts of Colombo, and it mainly was the imported cases for the city. But and also. Uh, uh, we, uh, I must say that uh, within the city limits, we do not see a huge uh, surge uh, of cases, mm. or rather exponential growth of which we expected, and which is we are experiencing right now at the uh, in the other cities mm -hmm. uh, and villages in in, in 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 our country. So I think um, I think we will be discussing why, what are the reasons, but mainly. Now, after one month, really uh, nearly one month, one and a half months after the new year, now what we see is that we see more and more indigenous, rather not imported, our own cases are coming up now, mm -hmm. right? So it's basically taking up, you know, to the grassroots and, 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 and we are getting uh, cases like that. But, but again, when we really compare the, the third wave, with the second wave what we had. Uh, well, I must say that, you know, it took about uh, only one and a half months for us to control the first wave and about four months for the second wave. Mm. And we had a very bad period during the month of November and December. Um, and of course, in the, in the th third wave, what I see still is that still gathering the momentum, mm. right? As you can, as you mentioned, you know, in epidemics, oh. usually you can't see uh, very quick results if we come to the point travel restrictions, right? It takes it like a huge vehicle. You go, you know, you go at a speed and you apply brakes, oh. right? This is where the danger lies. Oh. This is why the cases are going up. So this expert opinion as a person who understands this in the ground level, yeah. how long do you think that we will have to stay like this? Is, is it going to be till the end of person? Do you think it should go on further? In your expert opinion, where should we stop in terms of travel restrictions? Uh, well, um, I think it's a million dollar question. Um, yeah, I personally believe because now since we have achieved uh, some sort of a static situation, mm. it was going up like this, right? Then we have reached sort of a static situation because we were just about to pass 4,000 cases a day. Yeah. Right? 3,500, 3,800. But now we have seen that it's about 2,500, hmm. 2,600. So it takes time hmm. to get down and, and for us to be, uh, to be um, you know, manageable level, yeah. I think we have to get down to uh, somewhere like 500 a day. Hmm. Right? 
Yeah. Doctor, now the other other interesting question that a lot of people ask, and I'm sure you're the best person to answer this also, is the numbers that come, the PCR test results that come, yeah. are they up to date? Now this question has been there throughout. Yeah. But when it comes to Colombo, as you said, we have seen a high number in certain days and on, on other days, especially the numbers as well as the number of deaths also. Mm. Uh, whether the numbers get updated real time and, and why so? Why is there this doubt among the people that the numbers get sort okay. of manipulated along the way? I think very good question. I know that uh, there had been some uh, you know, queries and, and some questions about this data. Uh, I can only talk about the city of Colombo. Yeah. And when you say Colombo, people think that is the city. Mm. No, it's not. Yeah, when you say uh, Colombo, it's the Colombo district. The Western province has three, uh, what you call rather, um, districts, the Colombo, Gampa, and um, Kalutara. So the entire Colombo district. But when I talk, I mean, when I say Colombo, it's the city of Colombo. And within the city, I can say that we always produce our data then and there, we update then and there. Today's today findings, today positives, updated by, by 12 midnight. By tomorrow morning, I, I send that to my municipal commissioner, uh, to the uh, all the policymakers, the mayor of Colombo, and uh, the governor of the Western Province. Hmm. So all the policymakers get that data next day morning hmm. because because we are linked up with the Sri Javadalpur University yes. and they produce I must thank them um, uh, uh, behalf of the cit citizens of Colombo and we send samples only to them and they give us results just within 12 hours right. by 12 midnight so from I your from your end what you're saying is for as far as the city of Colombo is concerned they are updated regularly and there, yeah. there is no error from your end. No, no, what not at all. Uh, Dr. Vijay Muni, then let's go to the next uh, portion of the problem. Yeah. That is the vaccination process. Yeah. And uh, you as part of the Colombo Municipal Council is very well aware of the AstraZeneca uh, issue and the COVID shield not being available for the second dose. Yeah. Now, uh, we are also aware, we, I'm not going to ask you political questions because you, you are a government official of people getting the vaccine through other means. All that aside, mm. uh, now there is a problem in Colombo, where a lot of people, including people who work here, uh, who have not received the second vaccine, yep. is there a solution at least to the people of Colombo as far as we are known? Well, yeah. Uh, well, it's like this. Uh, we have vaccinated 107,084 uh, 107, uh, people with the AstraZeneca first dose. And we could only give the second dose for about 7,000 people, including health officials, health workers, all that. Mm. So 100,000 people are still waiting for their second dose. Mm. Um, I know that the government is dying hard to get uh, doses secured. And they are looking at various options. Mm. Well, I'm well aware about that. Um, and um, until I get uh, the doses into my hand because there are 600,000 doses are needed uh, for those, oh, yeah, to give the second dose for those who got the first yes. dose of AstraZeneca and, and Colombo needs 100,000 alone. Um, so uh, when it comes to the Sinopharm, we, we have already started giving the second dose, mm -hmm. right? So we have already done one third of what we have uh, given, I mean, the, the first dose. Um, so uh, for AstraZeneca, well, we are still waiting and we have to wait. There is uh, no distinct. Uh, no, no, no not to my knowledge, not to my knowledge. I'm not the best person to answer that question, but I know the government is trying their best to find and secure doses. With that, uh, Doctor, let's quickly cross over to a commercial break. But when we come back, we are going to focus more on the COVID situation as well as the dengue situation. Uh, 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 not a new problem, but a problem that we've known about, but how that is going to impact the current impact the current status quo is what we are going to discuss when we come back. News first, news line. Welcome back. We are in discussion with uh, Dr. Ruan Vijay Muni about the COVID-19 situation. Uh, before we went into the break, we discussed about the vaccine and uh, how people in Colombo uh, 
would receive the first jab, uh, second jab rather, of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Doctor, didn't you uh, get any calls from the VIPs asking for the second jab or the first jab in, in this time span? Did you get any calls? Well, yes, uh, especially about this AstraZeneca, the second jab. A lot of people were asking uh, when can they get it. Your people are anxious. It's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, yes, I do. And um, to the lesser extent about the uh, Sinopharm, mm. where, where because we that's have enough somewhat available. Uh, yeah. uh, doctor, now another factor that a lot of people are discussing is the fact that there is this crowd within Colombo uh, who are well connected, let's say. Uh, who do not seem to respect the travel restrictions or, or, or these procedures that are in place right. and they do basically what they would do when it's a normal time. Mm -hmm. For example, we had uh, two events that led to a lot of uh, controversy in the country yeah. in the recent past. Uh, but things like that happen. And, and are you aware of things like this that are happening, like the, the, like the CMC? What is your view on this? What is your take on this? all these events that are happening? Right, well, I think uh, w when it comes to uh, the events that are taking place in places like hotels and uh, uh, clubs, and things, it has been completely stopped. Mm. But again, you know, private parties, I know that they do happen. Uh, all what I can officially approve is only a registration, uh, wedding registration, but not a wedding function for about 15 people max, but no other gatherings, mm. right? And of course, uh, um, the funerals for about 25 people, that's the max. So, uh, except that, uh, well, I do not give approval for any religious anything, mm. not at all. Mm. But I'm sure maybe undercover, there may be happening, maybe people are meeting, um, you know, a couple of people who are meeting for gatherings, mm. so on and so forth. But it's very, very pathetic uh, situation because uh, travel restrictions are imposed by the government. Um, though there's a huge economic cost to the country in order to save lives. Mm. So I think we all should be responsible and, and we should behave responsibly in order to curb this spread. Mm. Mm. So I think, uh, uh, I think certain people do not respect and, and, and I do agree with you, uh, well then uh, we have to take action against them there's no, no, no question about it. Doctor, then comes the next big problem that Sri Lanka and Colombo and especially the CMC uh, area uh, is facing and that is Dengue. And uh, Ms. Mindukuru Surya can help us out with this as well. Uh, yes, with the COVID situation, all the focus from the health sector is there. Yeah. And even we have received, and I have personally called you regarding uh, several incidents yeah. as well. There is uh, matters relating to Dengue happening as yeah. well, yeah. especially in Colombo and even like very developed areas, residential areas. So doctor, what about the dengue situation? Is it, is it bad? Is it, is it controllable? What is the dengue situation here in Colombo now, especially since we are coming out of this rain, you know, no rain, yeah. rain situation? Yeah, I think very good question. Um, well, now, uh, if you take the last year, right? Um, uh, 2020 was the best year, right? where the dengue numbers are concerned. Mm. It was the lowest ever for about last 10 years. Right. For one decade, it was the lowest. Mm. Because I think people were remaining uh, in-house mm. and they were looking after their vicinity, you know, breeding. But this year, there is a huge difference. Now I think people got used to their normal routine and, and, and people do not really um, uh, looking for the breeding places. I'm sure that my um, entomologist will talk about it, about breeding places. So basically now what we see this year is very exceptional year because now we have a double burden. Why I say double burden? Because it's the same people who were combating uh, dengue had to, combat. I had to shift them, including me, to combat a bigger pandemic like COVID. Mm. Now, our, as you very correctly said, so our whole focus is on COVID. All my six MOHs, my public health inspectors, and, and uh, the entomologist had to do COVID work as well, and, and uh, my uh, epidemiologist, my deputies, everyone. Um, and in addition to that, Chaturanga, in case, because now people have to be more careful not to contract dengue because the hospitals are all, all already 
overwhelmed, overwhelmed with, the, with the patients. Correct. And in case, if that particular, the, the loved one of yours needs ICU care, mm. the intensive care, sorry, we will have a problem. And also, uh, all the, what you call, uh, earlier, uh, what you call, the, the hospitals that have been dedicated for dengue care, specialized units, now taking care of COVID patients. So we had to be very, very careful in, you know, basically controlling and, and not to contract this disease. Mm -hmm. But I see, especially with the, with the change of the weather patterns, uh, the, because this year we, we saw from March onwards, mm. scattered rains coming in, mm. and that made a huge difference. Yeah. And so far, we got 462 cases for these six months. And I'm sure it may be even underreported. I, I must admit that mm. maybe underreported because, as you very correctly said, because it's the focus, focus is on COVID, is, is on the, on the, on COVID mm. right? But last year, for the entire year, we had only one uh, uh, 1,000. 61 cases for the entire year mm. whereas we used to have the seven, uh, 19 uh, sorry 20 uh, um, 2019 was the worst mm. year mm. Uh, where we had uh, nearly 6,000 cases mm. with 14 deaths but so far thank god mm. touch wood we didn't have a single death uh, attributed to dengue mm. um, and uh, that's the status quo as it is now uh, so we have to, we are doing everything possible mm. and, and this may be uh, this surge and you know, the c uh, cases are going up, mm. right? And it will go up till July, mm. right? And, and it will start coming down by August. We have two peaks, mm. two peaks, June, July, August yeah. and also November, December, January. Yes. And also we see, a se uh, this is a seasonal, uh, this thing, and also we see a cyclic, um, what you call pattern, where every four years, we, we see a surge of cases. So, unfortunately, this is the fourth year after 2017, yeah. right? This is the fourth year that we are coming into yeah. and we might get more cases. Madam, what are these, what are these now? <coughs> People have been staying at home and usually they would be worried about these high-risk areas yes. and all of that. Have the municipal council at least identified what these high-risk areas yeah. are yeah. and then what we can do now? We are stuck at home, I mean, we yeah. can't do anything. So, what can the people do to prevent dengue now? Yeah, uh, it's a challenging time uh, because uh, dengue used to be the priority. Now it's clouded by the COVID situation, but it doesn't mean that the importance has reduced. Yeah. Importance remains the same, Definitely. just clouded. Mm. So uh, when we consider the data in CMC area, so far we have got like uh, 461 cases up mm. to now for six months. Mm. And uh, f from that, uh, we see a rise of cases in uh, central Colombo and in Valavatta area especially. Right. Okay. Because the uh, Valavatta area used to be a very controlled area uh, with regards to dengue situation. But now with the surge of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, situation and also they are facing an increase in dengue situation also. Mm. So basically uh, in Colombo we find like 85% of the breeding places we find are indoors. So I have a request uh, for the citizens in uh, Colombo and also throughout the country to uh, when you are in a lockdown you are at home yeah. so you can uh, like spend 30 minutes per day and uh, f uh, once a week that's all once a week you can uh, just uh, you know go through your home and see whether there are any breeding places especially in homes you get breeding places in the kitchen mm. and uh, in the bathroom especially and other areas, roof gutters and uh, those things are common. Mm. Uh, but in the outdoors, we fi don't find many in Columbus. So when, when we say indoors, does that mean that we, we find dengue breeding places yeah. inside Definitely. a house? Is, Definitely. is that what you're saying? The, there are two vectors for dengue. Uh, one is, uh, the main one is Aedes, Egypti, and the secondary vector is Aedes albopictus. So in Colombo, 80% uh, of the vectors we find are Aedes aegypti. But in out, uh, outskirts, like in Gampaha or Kalutara, you get Aedes albopictus. Right. So this Aedes aegypti species is an indoor species. It dwells indoor, it uh, feeds indoor, it breeds indoor, and it uh, takes its blood meal indoor. Hmm. So if you are in indoors and there is a breeding place, uh, there is a high chance uh, that you are getting a dengue. And when we uh, do surveys, uh, in areas that are that uh, have so many dengue cases, we see that, uh, especially in um, 
quarters um, and government institutions um, and public places. Uh, we see that there are so many indoor breeding places. Mm. So, and uh, unlike in countries like Singapore, where they had uh, a spike of dengue uh, with the lockdowns, but we are yeah, experiencing no. a lower number when right. compared to that. But uh, I think uh, the case is uh, the more breeding places are found in, uh, mostly in public places. Understood. So uh, when there are travel restriction, uh, you tend not to go to the, the public places. So uh, homes are there, mm. but the critical places are the public places. Yeah, Schools, hospitals, mm. uh, police stations, uh, likewise. Right. Yeah. Doctor, fumigation process. Now, yeah. there, there are debates about this, mm. whether they work or whether they do not work. Yeah. But personally, I would understand that at a time like this, if the CMC takes steps to yeah. fumigate certain areas, yeah. w that would be helpful. Does that happen now? Uh, or is that is that practical to do? I, I don't understand. So, therefore, the question to you. Yeah. I think uh, in dengue control, the number one is reduction and elimination of breeding places. That's number one. Right. No, nothing can replace that particular practice. Right. If you want to reduce, that's the thing. But in an epidemic or rather outbreak or epidemic situation like this, what we are facing right now, uh, fogging and fumigation is must that we have to do because right. we have to knock down mm. basically the infectious female Edis aegypti or Edis albopictus vectors. So definitely the outdoor fogging had to be done on particular times, not during daytime of course. Mm. We have to start very early so the mosquito starts flying from we'll say 5.36 to 7 a.m., mm -hmm. 7, 7.30, and in the evening it starts around 5 to go still about 7.30, right? So those are the times that we have to focus and do fogging. So this is what exactly we are doing. We are aiming and focusing on um, highly dense, pop, highly high density uh, populated areas mm -hmm. like Watu and you know, what we call Vatta and also uh, the high rises and the uh, condominiums, right? And, and we do fogging. Mm. And of course, we do two kinds of fogging. One is outdoor fogging, where we use malath technical malathion, which is a WHO approved uh, chemical, but you should not use it in excess because it kills not only mosquitoes, right? Mm. It's so sad that it kills butterflies, you know, various other, other innocent uh, uh, insects. Uh, but then uh, also we use uh, another chemical to fog indoors. Mm. As my entomologist very correctly said, uh, these um, um, uh, it is, um, um, uh, mosquitoes are hiding inside. Right. And we have had very good results produced by implementing uh, what you call this um, okay. indoor fogging. And there's still a place uh, for that, but not only fogging, we do other things as well. Thank you, Dr. Ruan Vijayamuni, uh, Chief <coughs> Medical Officer of the Colombo Municipal Council for uh, being here with us and talking to us about these uh, key points uh, surrounding these two uh, factors. Thank you, uh, Ms. Mildukuru Surya, also uh, entomologist attached to the Colombo Municipal Council for being here and uh, talking to us today. Uh, I also have to thank uh, Mr. Vijay Muni for the constant uh, connection that you keep with the media and trying to update the general public about what's happening, especially at least uh, in the Colombo city limits and, and uh, what happens in those areas. So once again, uh, thank you to you as well uh, for watching. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't take your questions today, but you can catch this show uh, on our uh, social media platforms and YouTube as well. Uh, search for hashtag news first, uh, uh, hashtag newsline SL, and then you can re-watch this and share it uh, with your friends and loved ones. Thank you very much for watching. I urge you to stay tuned to the Primetime English News Bulletin.